Hi everybody, welcome to the iMachines TV channel. The manufacturing process of a wind tower involves several steps, and one of the crucial steps is bending steel plates to form the cylindrical shape required for the tower. A three-roll bending machine is a common piece of equipment used in this process. The first step is to prepare the steel plate by cutting it to the required dimensions. Once the plate is cut, it is loaded onto the bending machine. The plate is fed between the top and bottom rollers of the machine, with the third roller located on top. As the plate passes through the machine, the top roller applies pressure to the plate, forcing it to bend into a cylindrical shape. The two lower rollers provide support and help guide the plate through the machine. The bending process requires a significant amount of force to achieve the desired curvature, and the three-roll bending machine is capable of applying this force with precision and control. Depending on the specific requirements of the manufacturer, the machine may need to perform multiple passes to achieve the desired curvature. Once the plate has been bent to the required diameter, the ends are welded together to form a pipe. Next, multiple pipes are welded together to form the full height of the wind tower. The number of pipes required will depend on the desired height of the tower, which can range from several tens to hundreds of meters. Finally, the completed wind tower is subjected to rigorous testing to ensure it meets the required quality and safety standards. This includes testing for structural integrity, wind resistance, and corrosion resistance. A section bending machine is a piece of equipment used in metalworking and fabrication industries to bend various types of metal sections, such as pipes, tubes, beams, angles, and channels, into different shapes and angles. The process of bending metal sections using a section bending machine involves the use of rollers and specialized tools. The metal section is first placed in the section bending machine, and the rollers are positioned at specific angles and distances from each other. The rollers are then adjusted to the desired diameter and angle of the bend. The machine operator then activates the machine, which initiates the bending process. The rollers rotate the metal section, and as the section passes through the rollers, the metal begins to deform and bend into the desired shape. The machine operator can adjust the speed and pressure of the rollers to achieve the desired bend radius and angle. Section bending machines are versatile and can bend a wide range of metal sections. They are often used in the construction of metal structures, such as bridges, buildings, and pipelines. The accuracy and precision of section bending machines make them an essential tool in metalworking and fabrication industries. Dayhan Bolt is a leading manufacturer of high-quality bolts for various industries, including automotive, construction, and power generation. The manufacturing process of Dayhan Bolt involves several stages, starting from the selection of raw materials to the final product inspection. The first step is the selection of the appropriate grade of steel, which is determined by the intended application of the bolt. The raw materials are then cut to the appropriate length and heated to a specific temperature for forging. The forging process involves shaping the heated metal into the desired shape of the bolt head and shank. The next step is threading, which is done using a cold forming process. The bolt is placed in a die and a thread is formed on the shank. The threading process increases the strength of the bolt by compressing the metal along the thread axis. After threading, the bolts undergo heat treatment to improve their mechanical properties. The heat treatment process involves heating the bolt to a specific temperature and holding it there for a specific time, followed by cooling it down slowly. This process improves the strength, toughness, and ductility of the bolt. The final step is surface treatment, which involves applying a protective coating to the bolt. This is done to prevent corrosion and improve the bolt's appearance. The coating can be electroplated, hot dip galvanized, or coated with other materials depending on the application. Before the bolts are shipped to the customer, they undergo rigorous inspection to ensure that they meet the required standards. This includes visual inspection, dimensional measurement, and mechanical testing. 
The bolts are then packaged and shipped to the customer. When producing a seamless square tube with a big diameter from seamless pipe through the cold drawing process, the initial step would be to select high-quality seamless pipe that meets the required specifications for the finished square tube, such as the diameter, wall thickness, and material composition. The seamless pipe would then be inspected for any surface imperfections or defects, cut to the appropriate length, and loaded into the drawing machine. The cold drawing process would begin by passing the seamless pipe through a series of dies arranged in a specific sequence. The first roughing die would reduce the diameter of the pipe while shaping it into a round cross section. The material would then pass through several intermediate dies, each of which would further reduce the diameter and shape the material closer to its final square cross section. As the material passes through each die, it is pulled through by a combination of a mandrel and a draw bench. The mandrel is a rod or bar that runs through the center of the material and helps to maintain its shape and dimensions during the drawing process. The draw bench, on the other hand, pulls the material through the dies at a controlled speed and tension. The final step in the drawing process is to pass the material through a finishing die, which gives it its final square cross section and smooth surface finish. This die is designed with square-shaped openings that match the desired dimensions of the finished tube, and it applies the necessary pressure and shaping to the material to achieve the desired shape. Once the drawing process is complete, the seamless square tube would be inspected for quality, and any necessary post-processing, such as heat treatment or surface finishing, may be applied to further improve its properties or appearance. The finished seamless square tube would then be ready for use in a wide range of applications, from structural framing to machinery components to automotive parts. The manufacturing process of a welded beam involves a series of steps, nesting. The nesting stage involves laying out the design for the welded beam on a computer-aided design, CAD software. Cutting. After the nesting stage, the sheets of flange plates and web bars are cut to the required size using CNC cutting machines. These machines use high-speed plasma or laser cutting tools that can cut through the metal sheets with high precision, ensuring that the cut edges are straight and smooth. Grinding Once the sheets are cut, they undergo a grinding process to remove any burrs or sharp edges that could affect the welding process. Grinding is a vital step, as any protrusions or rough edges can cause the sheets to misalign during welding. Tack Welding After grinding, the sheets are brought together and temporarily held in place using tack welds. Tack welding involves creating small welds that hold the sheets together, allowing them to be moved or adjusted as needed before final welding. Tack welding is a critical step as it helps ensure that the sheets are aligned correctly before the final welding process. Copping. The sheets are then trimmed or copped to ensure that they are straight and smooth. Copping is essential to ensure that the edges of the sheets are aligned correctly, which is critical for the welding process to be successful. Welding. The sheets are then welded together using high-powered welding machines that use electric arcs to melt and fuse the metal sheets together. Welding is the most critical step in the manufacturing process, as it determines the strength and durability of the final product. Welding requires skill and expertise, 
and any errors or deviations can lead to defects in the final product. Gauging. After welding, the welded beam is gauged to ensure that it conforms to the required specifications. Gauging involves checking the dimensions, shape, and quality of the welded beam using specialized tools such as calipers and straight edges. Any deviations or defects are identified and corrected at this stage. Straightening. If any deviations are found during gauging, the welded beam is straightened to correct them. Straightening involves using hydraulic or mechanical presses to bend or deform the welded beam back into the correct shape. Straightening is essential to ensure that the welded beam meets the required specifications and can perform as intended. Final inspection. After straightening, the welded beam undergoes a final inspection to ensure that it meets the required standards. The final inspection involves checking for defects such as cracks, porosity, or incomplete welding. Any defects are identified and corrected before the welded beam is approved for use.